Hey everyone, I'm Adam, and over the next three videos, I'm going to show you how to deploy OpenShift 4 in a disconnected environment. And you can see on the slide, I'm going to do this in three parts. Part one is all about syncing content onto an internet connected sync host, transferring it into my disconnected environment, and then installing the cluster. Part two, we're going to do cluster upgrades. So how do I download a new version of OpenShift, bring it into the environment, and then trigger the upgrade? And part three is how do you bring uh, operator hub or at least portions of the operator hub into your disconnected environment so that you can use it. Before I go into any, this any further, a quick rundown on what the environment looks like. And again, forgive me for this dodgy looking diagram, but you have internet access here provided through my, my own personal home router. I have an internet connected host. This is the host I'm going to sync all of the content onto. I then have this separate isolated VLAN, which is my disconnected VLAN. I'm deploying a three node OpenShift cluster. So my control plane nodes will be schedulable. I'll have a bootstrap node and I'll have this helper disconnected uh, node here. And that node here is where I'm going to run the cluster installation from. It's going to run my registry because I am doing a bare metal UPI install that will also do Pixie, TFTP, HTTPD, DHCP, DNS, all of the acronyms will be running on this particular host. Now, this environment here, this subnet has no internet access. So you can't reach the internet, you can't do anything at all. You may notice that I have my internet connected host has one leg on this network, and that is just a side effect of me not being able to have a fully air gap deployment in here. So when I sync content onto this host, where you would normally copy it to some sort of removable media and then walk it across the room, plug it in, and then upload it into your disconnected environment. I don't have that luxury. So what I'm going to do to simulate that process is I'm just going to rsync from the connected side to the disconnected side. But once that process is over, I don't need this anymore. Everything will run from the helper node. Okay, I want to just take you through and show you the environment that I'm going to be deploying in. So first thing to note is this OpenShift environment, I'm deploying it on top of OpenShift using OpenShift virtualization, just to see if we can make it happen. Um, so you'll see I've got my bootstrap node, my three control plane nodes, this one here, disco registry, this is my helper node in the disconnected side. And this is my internet connected sync host, which I'm going to download all of the content onto. So I will rsync from helper to disco registry and then I will deploy the cluster here. Of note, I also have open copies of the installation documentation for deploying on bare metal in a restricted network. The concepts that I'm showing you are applicable even if you're deploying onto something like OpenStack, um, RHV or Overt or vSphere in a disconnected environment. The difference is that you won't have all that supporting bare metal infrastructure that I have, but essentially you'll have exactly the same process. Sync all of your content down, bring it across into your air gapped environment, then upload it and then start to deploy the cluster. The concepts are the same. You'll just be following a slightly different set of instructions. There's also full documentation about creating a mirror registry for the environment, how to prepare the host, what you need, etc., etc. Again, I'm not showing anything that isn't already in the documentation. So please do have a look through it because it's going to plug um, a lot of gaps about things I may not talk about in the videos that are coming up. So the first thing we'll do, let's get started. I'm going to shift to my terminal view. And you can see I've got two terminals open. One is on sync connected. This is the internet connected host. This is helper disconnected. I am going to sync all of my content into a file called mirror, or this, this directory called mirror. And this is what I'm gonna pull across the air gap. You can already see I've got some content in here because I have mirrored some of it before. I have a very basic release mirror script here. I'm not going to go through it in depth, but the key thing is I run one command purely to generate um, image content source policy detail that I need for install config.yaml. I'm then going to run an actual mirror of all of the content for a given OpenShift release down to a specific directory. In this case, slash root slash mirror slash OCP dash release. And the last step, and this is important, I'm going to make sure I also download the OC and OpenShift install binaries that match the version that I'm trying to deploy. So I'm gonna run this right now, release mirror version 4.6.1, because that's the version I wanna start with. 
Now this takes a minute or so to run because it's going to query and, and, and go through the container. So I'm going to pause the recording and come back when it's finished and then I'll talk to you about what happened. So I'm going to bring you back in whilst it's now downloading the two binaries. So it's finished syncing all of my content. I'm just going to pause this for a second. You can see it said, hey, I finished mirroring in 20 milliseconds. That's because I've already mirrored 4.6.1 down onto the file system, so it's not duplicating the download. You'll probably find that in your environment, it could take a little bit of time. The average OpenShift 4.6 release seems to be, we'll go up just a little bit higher. A little bit further, where is it? You can see that the average release is probably around 6.5 gigabytes. So if your internet connection is as poor as mine, it could take a bit of time um, to, to, to download it all to disk. Now, I figured you didn't want to spend 45 minutes watching me download content. You can see it's just pulling down also the 4.6.1 version of OpenShift install and 4.6.1 version of OpenShift client. This is really important because in some cases, you will need to make sure that the version of OpenShift install that you're using matches the version that you want to, or sorry, matches the cluster version that you want to deploy. And the reason for this is that the cluster's release image is hard-coded into the OpenShift install binary. Now, there is a step in the documentation that talks about extracting OpenShift install from, uh, extracting it from a release image. And I will just jump down to where it is, mirror. Here we go, release extract. This command is designed, it's OCM AD, OCM ADM release extract. This is designed to pull OpenShift install out of a release image and then patch it so that it has your release image for your environment as the hard-coded destination. Two problems with that, or two challenges with that rather. Number one, you have to do it on a cluster with an active internet connection. And two, you have to provide details of the destination registry. Now, if you're disconnected or air-gapped environment is sensitive and you can't expose host names on an internet connected system, this step is not appropriate for you. The good news is you don't have to do it as long as you make sure that the release version of OpenShift install matches the release that you want to deploy. Then the release images will match and you'll find everything works. If it doesn't work, you'll find you have problems during Bootstrap because during Bootstrap, the first thing it will try to do is pull down the release image and you'll find very early on it will fail because it will not be able to pull it. Let's go back to our terminal. So now that I've got everything copied or down onto my disk, if I have a look in my mirror directory, you can see I've downloaded everything I need. I've also got 4.6.4, which will come in the next video. I've got the installer kernel in at RamFS and RootFS for CoreOS. This is because I'm doing a bare metal install. If you were doing an install on VMware, RHV, OpenStack, etc., then you would probably just bring down the appropriate CoreOS image for those environments. I also have Docker registry 2.tar, which I've brought down using Podman save. And this is because I need to deploy a registry on the other side in my disconnected environment because I don't have one there. So what I'm going to do now, again, this is where normally you would copy to removable media and send it across the air gap. Um, instead, I'm going to rsync because that's going to be my equivalent to copying to that removable media. So let's do that. Send it over to a disconnected helper node. I'm going to pause the recording here again because this can take a little bit of time and I figure you don't want to sit here and watch this run through to completion. So we're back now and the rsync is now completed. So if we jump over to our disconnected helper node, we have a look in the mirror directory and everything that we had in here is now available in this environment. Now, like I said, right at the start, I don't need the connected sync host anymore. Everything else is gonna be run from here. Now, one thing, okay, so I don't yet have it running. One thing I need to do is I need to start a local Docker registry uh, because I need somewhere to push those mirrored containers to. If you already have a, an image, sorry, if you already have a registry in your environment, you don't have to do this. But what I'm going to do, actually, what I'm going to do is podman load that tarball for that container that I brought across. Okay. Now I have a script here which simply runs that registry, mounts some locations mounts in some um, um, some certificates and some credentials, and that's about it. And then exposes it obviously on port 5000. So let's go ahead and run that registry right now. Podman. 
and now you can see we're up and running. So now what I have to do is I need to go from this OCP release directory in here, which has all of the blobs and all of the config, I need to go from there and I need to push it into the registry. Now there is a command OC image mirror that will take care of this for me. I wrote a little script just called upload release. It's not really much of a script to be honest, but it's just OC image mirror from directory root mirror OCP release. These particular containers. So obviously everything that starts with what in this case will be 4.6.1 goes into the registry at localhost 5000 into this repository. I set in secure here purely because <clears throat> purely because of the um, uh, because of the certificate and keep manifest list is true doesn't really matter here so much but will become important when we talk about operators in part 3. So once again, let's go ahead and upload that release. 4.6.1 Again, this will take a little bit of time just to go and push it into, uh, just to push it into the registry locally. Um, so once again, we'll skip ahead, and by the time you see it, everything will be pushed into the registry. But now we've finished mirroring all of the content into our registry, and essentially now what we can do. Come on, ah, I need to install the older version of my packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run my little script called extract OpenShift tools, which essentially just takes those tarballs that we copied from our synchronized, uh, sorry, our internet connected hosts and extracts them onto my system for me. Okay, awesome. So now you can see OpenShift install version 4.6.1, release image is Quader.io, OpenShift release dev, yada, yada, yada. SHA-256, all right, here's the full release image. Now the key thing is that this release image is going to match the one that I downloaded, which is good, that's exactly what I want to happen. Essentially what I need to do now is I need to set up my install config. Now I already have an install config that's here. Here is what I prepared earlier. I'm going to deploy everything under example.com. I have no workers, so my control plane nodes will end up being schedulable. The name of the cluster will just be OCP because I am very creative. There's no platform for this. It's not FIPS. The pull secret here, I don't technically need it because I don't have any authentication on the registry. But if you don't place it there, the installer will complain. SSH key is already generated on the system. So this will be the key that I can use to log in as the core user on each of the nodes. I have a certificate bundle. Oh, sorry, I have a certificate there for um, essentially for the registry. And then image content sources, this came from the icsp.txt file that I copied. So if we have a quick look at mirror icsp.txt, there's a bunch of output from the mirroring process, but there's this section here, image content sources. And you can see that this looks very similar to this, with the only difference being that instead of localhost 5000, I've replaced it with the actual name of the disconnected registry so that the cluster has somewhere to reach out to. So the next step from here is I am going to, I have a little command here called, oops, again, there we go. Little command called clean cluster. All it is, it just copies, wipes the existing cluster state for when I was testing, copies the install config in, and then runs OpenShift install, create the ignition configs, copies the ignition configs to where I need them to be so that the, the booting nodes can reach them. If I run that right now, Awesome. Now, in theory, all I have to do now is start, is turn on the bootstrap node and it will pick up its pixie config and start going from there. If you're wondering how I, you know, got everything configured for pixie and DNS and, H, uh, and DHCP and the like, I'll take you back to our dashboard for a second. Have a look at this repository here, OCP4 helper node. It contains a set of Ansible playbooks that will deploy essentially an all-in-one node that provides all of this. DNS, load balancing, web server, etc., etc. Makes it really easy to get started. This is what I use. Works pretty well. And so now when my nodes boot in OpenShift virtualization, they will pixie boot off of all of the config that this playbook has deployed for me. So while we're here, let's get the ball rolling. Let's start our first virtual machine. 
go into the console. Here it comes. We'll give it a second to Pixie Boot. It will. I've can. I've adjusted the Pixie template so that it will give me a boot menu, so that I can choose between either boot off the local disk, which is the default, or boot off of the NIC, which is what I want to do, so that we can get the Bootstrap mode installed. Again, this is specific to how I'm deploying it using a bare metal user provision infrastructure method. If you're deploying this on another platform, the way you deploy it will depend on um, how you're deploying it on your particular platform, and that's where our documentation will come in handy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to essentially skip the rest of the recording. The next thing you will see is when we're essentially waiting for the cluster installation to complete, um, and then we'll be able to talk about what happened during that process. So I'll see you shortly. So now you can see we've got about halfway through the process. The bootstrapping process is completed. You're going to see, a, you can see all of these little errors that have popped up here throughout it. That is a side effect of me installing this cluster on some hardware that is probably a little bit undersized for what I'm trying to throw at it. But the key point is it's now safe to remove bootstrap resources. So let's go back to the OpenShift virtualization dashboard and let's delete the bootstrap node. I no longer need it. So it can both be stopped and deleted. Now what I'm going to do, whilst that is deleting in the background, is we'll go back to our terminal. And I'm going to run essentially the same sort of command again, but I'm going to wait for install to complete. And just like last time, I'm going to pause the recording because, well, there we go. I must have left it longer than I expected. The cluster has actually finished and is actually deployed. So let's go and actually see if we can get into it. So I'm going to just off camera, off screen, I'm just going to change my proxy settings because I have a SSH proxy set up so that I can get into that environment. And what I'm going to do, come back to the terminal, let's get a copy of this. I'm going to now bring you back to the dashboard Let's see if we can get in there. Okay, that's a good sign. I'm still using self-signed certificates, so that's perfectly normal. Here's the dashboard. I need the cube admin pass user, and I need the password that's in my terminal still. Don't save, because it will change. And there you go. So that is OpenShift 4.6.1 installed, running on OpenShift actually, but installed in a simulated, disconnected slash semi air gapped style environment where we copy everything down to the disk, we move it across into our disconnected environment, and then we ingest it all from the disk with no dependency on the internet connected sync host. So, with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up. That's the end of part one. Now, part two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we're going to upgrade this cluster from version 4.6.1 to version. 4.6.4 and you'll be very pleased to know that it's pretty simple pretty straightforward and we're going to use exactly the same process that we did in part one i'll see you in the next video